Good morning, everyone. It's 7.05 in the morning, and we have a mission to do today. We've got three flights for you today. Out to Minyamya, down to Madang, and back up here to Garoka. So Jeff and I are gonna be going over the IFR environment here in Papua New Guinea today. He's been flying now for how long? Like three-ish months? Been three months, yep. Three months. So we're just now getting into the IFR stuff. So as we start moving into the rainy season, we're gonna want him to be proficient in IFR operations here in PNG, and it's much different than America. a bunch of clouds. Uh, we got a weather report out there and we've got overcast all in this area for Minyamya. So we're planning on coming down. They said that out towards the Gulf area, it they've got some like, they can see some lighter areas and stuff. So our plan is to head down that way and then just fly, um, just fly up the valley up into Minyamya. This will be a great training flight for Jeff because uh, yeah, this is very typical that it's IFR to VFR, back to IFR, and you have to think on the fly. Because you just can't fly out there at a minimum safe all the time. It just doesn't work that way. Good morning, Guru Katana, November Tango Echo, request taxi, Ben Yam Yam 2 POB. November Tango Echo, Roger. Taxi, 17 right, then a backtrack, 17 left or right, QNH 1022. 1022, we have the helicopter in sight, and enter taxi, or taxi, enter backtrack, 17 left, November Tango 0. Or, no, November Tango Echo. And that'll be 17 left for 17 right, November Tango Echo. Quick 17 left for right. For right, November Tango Echo. We're going to do the instrument departure today, which is basically 3 miles, 3.2 miles straight off the end of the runway, and then we'll take a left hand turn to heading 117. And um, you guys were trying it, because it's a nice VFR day today, you guys were trying yesterday on like. Way to put your flaps up to get the best rate and the safest, stay above train, things like that. So oh, let's, I want to just, uh, let's, let's try it. You said that we had 400, but we're going to be empty today, so it's going to be a bit different. Okay. Do you want to go ahead and do the 20 degrees of flaps and the 97 knots, still gas one? I said initially try it. I just want to see what it's doing completely empty. Okay. And if we're still just getting absolute terrible climb performance, let's clean up and then let's see what the difference is okay. without changing anything. Looks like there's enough clouds out there that we will actually have to go IMC at one point to get out to the next section. Circuit Tower, November Tango Echo is ready for departure. Tango Echo, roger. One turn right, uh, left turn, clear for takeoff. We have the helicopter in sight, uh, clear for takeoff, one seven right, uh, left turn, November Tango Zulu. Or, no, November Tango Echo. All right. It's confusing switching around, doesn't it? It is. So. Speed's alive. Continue. To get 96, we're gonna only be like a, probably like a five or six degree pitch angle to get okay. 96 knots. Okay. So we gotta be down here. I mean, that's like next to yeah. That's just absolutely horrible climb performance pushing over, keep pushing over to see how much we actually get. Because if we're going to go off of our SOP, okay. I want to know how crap it is so that we can have the discussion about this and get it changed if need be. Because, yeah, like 97 knots, we're, we're doing 450 feet per minute. Yeah. If the whole debate is about safety and getting above all And this, we're just like cruising over cruising. the valley. We're, we're almost Straight flat. Straight mountains here. We're almost flat. Yep. So, in my opinion, it doesn't have any validity, so we need to talk about getting that possibly okay. changed. Now climb up to 85 knots, so go up to seven and a half degrees, right there. Granted, we are a little bit faster, so let's bleed off the airspeed first, and then we'll see, I can kind of settle it in and see what it actually does. Okay. 
Hey, we've settled it in now, and we're climbing pretty consistently at 1100. Right now at 1150, we're at 87 knots. 1150 to 1100. Versus That's four almost to three yeah. times the amount by going 85. Yeah. All right, so this is where this big screen actually helps on this one. Okay. So you can get a better situational awareness. Okay. All right, at this point, then they want us to start making our turn, cleaning up, yeah. getting our prop back immediately so that we can just get our speed up to 100, climb out at 100, all the way up to gas at 2, up to 12. I think it's a 12.6 before we can start making any turns anywhere. 12.7 is if we go down to Medang, but at that point, we'll just make our right-hand turn, right, and then get the last degrees of flaps out as well. Okay. And then, if this is IMC, we're going to be wanting to use the, uh, the autopilot. You're the backup to the autopilot, sure. not the other way around, because it's going to be better than you. <laughs> it's better than me. It's better than everybody. Or less and then better. just trim for 100, and then get going on your uh, departure call and stuff like that. Crew guitar, November Tango, Echo, departed time 03, uh, tracking 145, uh, 8,300 8, on climb to 11,000, uh, estimate, Binyang, Binyang 35. November Tango, Echo, contact Mosby, 120 decimal 7 or 6, 6, 2, 2, 1, 5 miles. 120.7 or 6622 at 15 November Tango Zero, or November Tango Echo. Right, so it's flying by itself. Let's still clean up. Yep. Light off, bypass, igniters. All you're doing is just making sure that you're over 100. Yep. The more you can just like, I found for myself, the more I can just free my mind and not be like, okay, fixate. What do I need um, to do? Just like, honestly, just. Breathe take calmly, a breath. Take a breath. And master your breath. Yeah. Then it will free your mind up to be like, okay. And you can think more clearly when you are MC. Because, yeah, things can get really busy really fast. Okay. Even though they don't need to be. We're just, again, verifying that we're going to be at our 12.6 before we get to that. Or we're broke out, which is kind of what we're doing now before 11,000. So. At this point, then I'd be turning my altitude select back down to 11,000. Going turning that way, and then we're going to determine what we need to do to be able to get back down into Minyamia when we okay. get out there. Now let's level off at 11 just to evaluate what we want to do, because straight ahead Marawaka it looks pretty crap. But if we look out here towards the Gulf, it looks pretty stellar. Rather than going up to a 14,000 minimum safe and then being screwed and stuck on top, we want to make sure that we can get down. So I'm going to look over here and go, that's just not going to work at this altitude. I don't see any ridges until St. Okay. Denny, Sharambi sure. area. Yep. I'm just going to put on a heading and head out that way at 11,000. Okay. Especially if you have passengers, you don't want to have to go up to an altitude where they're required to wear oxygen. As we're getting close, you can kind of start to see the ridges just a tiny bit, right? So I just go for Let's find a lower spot. Right about where you're going right now, it looks like that might even be the mirror. Let's see, no, that's the walk is there. The walk is over there. So we're probably looking at the Narambi Gap right okay. there. But that looks like that's going to be the best option, is heading out that way, kind of staying on the edge of all these mountains and then coming up the valley. Right, we're just about 10 minutes out from now. Again, the people that were out here were picking up and said it's all overcast out that way, so we're coming down more to the south of where we went to in hopes that we can fly up the valley. It's actually looking really nice out there now, and um, yeah, we're not that far from it. So let me get this out of here for you, get this one out of there. Yep. That way you can get a better idea of where the valley is. So at this point, I'm going to start down because we want to get down into the valley rather than getting over there. Because it does, it looks like it's a pretty thick overcast, or at least a really hazy and just rainy. Like starting to descend, man. Be, just I'd be start on these descending in now. You've got, you hit the cursor, we come all the way up here. You've got 10 miles to the big valley that we want to get down into.
this is why rather than flying on this, now your map is a quarter of the size where this information is not it's not helpful, it's not anymore helpful at, this at point. all. So at this point when you are coming in, yeah, having the train on is great, but that way you can kind of see where do I actually need to go? Because you can't see a lot of the mountains and this helps kind of fill in that situational awareness. It looks like the ridge out there you see further on out yes. is... That's the other side of the valley or... Well, let's see, that is how many miles away? That's still 10 miles to the other side of the valley. It might be on the other side of that, but we're uh, okay. actually go down, okay. potentially. Oh, the winds are still at 35 knots. It That's is. Wild. We don't have those kinds of winds here very often. As long as this is our valley going up, this is the valley, I think. I know it's a really grassy one. With this many clouds, it's just hard yeah. to tell. Because we got the valley. And so it comes up this way and goes out that way. So I would say, yes, this is the valley. It's just around this little ridge here. So, yep, that's where we want to go down there. It's clear underneath. Let's start heading that way. And, yeah, this will work out well. So, while we're sitting here, before we get there, let's turn our circuit altitude down. We've already got it in there, so we can remember sure. to pull up in the chart. And do you remember what the runway heading was? 3-3. This might be an interesting landing. I've got to go around. It's going to be increased power, flaps 20, uh, pitch for 73 knots, and uh, 740 on the ITT, and it's going to be a slight ride up the river. Prop and harnesses. I guess is when we get a little bit closer to the ground, the winds will die down, down a quite a bit. bit, I hope. Otherwise, we'll have a 20 knot quartering tailwind for takeoff. Thankfully, we've only got 450 to 500 kgs yeah. out of here, and then it's like very long, but that's still the grass is pretty hefty amount. Fairly long as well. So, looking ahead out towards the lower route out that way, yes. it just looks like a lot of rain, rain and just kind of crap. So our best option is just to head back, back the same way we just came because we already know that it's it's nice that way. All station Minyamia, 1207, November Tango Echo is in the circuit, Minyamia. That's his 40 degrees knots. left side. So that's great. We're already dropping off 10 knots. Anybody on the runway is wet. Or potentially wet, yes. So it's going to be slippery okay. because with the longer grass and this type of grass here it gets really You're slippery okay. so don't just be, i mean it's so long don't just crank on the brake brakes as hard as you can sure and if you start sliding to the left get out of reverse okay Cause that's then, yeah, that's kind of what got me the other day at uh candrian was having the power in and 17 knots on the tail see those groups little patch of them go to just the right side of those right. okay i want to go we want to go about this altitude, just keep it at about 100 feet per minute going down. Okay. So we want to be about 75. Got quite a bit of wind, so let's start crabbing that way, just on the right side of those little bunch of trees. 65 knots, we're going to add at least 7 knots. Okay. So I'm just going to put you in at 72 knots. We want 82 here. Yep. 500. A couple extra, just because it's, it's going to be, we got 20 knots on the left power a little bit and start descending. I'm good. Been really good. We've only got six knots, five knots of wind on the head now. Just now get the power back in a little bit because we're getting already down to 72. Don't land short. Just get yourself. We have so much room here. At your speed. Oh, we're in a little bit. Nice job. The wind's dried down way down here, so that's good. Well, that's kind of de deceiving as far as where center line is with this. Yeah, when there's like this massive wide amount of grass, it is very difficult. Unless you're like looking out here and going, okay, where do I need to be? All right, we'll go ahead and pick back up out of here when we get out of here on takeoff. All right, we're here at Minyamia. Yeah, 
uh, interesting landing just because of the winds. We had 20 knots just at 500 feet and then it dropped down to about four or five knots. Pretty much these trees back here behind me, they block that. So we're picking up six passengers heading down to Medang now. We'll be heading out the exact same way that we just came in because it worked. This way out here, lots of rain, lots of clouds, lots of bumpiness with this 35 knots of wind going up there. So we're gonna make it as smooth as possible for these guys. 55 minutes probably down to Medang because we have to go a little bit longer. And shooting the approach down there, so stay tuned. We're loaded, we're ready. Let's head out on an hour flight up to Medang. Sprinkles a little bit, a little bit of a tailwind on takeoff, but um, by the time we get up to 500 feet, we'll probably have about a 20 knot tailwind, so let's go. Minyamia 1207, November Tango Echo will be taxiing Minyamia for Midday. We'll be on climb 1 2000, all stations Minyamia. Last section of the flight, if you've been watching that or if you skipped any, just to let you guys know, there's a bunch of weather all in this area here, all the way down to about there. So we're going to come back around the same way and then jet on up to Medang on an hour flight. We're going to shoot the GNSS 07, it's an LNAV down into Medang. And when we left this morning, it sounded like it might have actually needed an, eye, um, an approach. So we'll see as we get closer what it's like. It'll be two hours since we left Garoka, so I don't really think it is. Did feel probably, I don't know, potentially up to 10 knots. You'll probably have a little bit more here. As we take off, we have a tailwind. We're gonna get off, we're gonna push over. We're gonna get our speed up to like 85 knots. Okay. And then kind of just slowly climb out so that we're maintaining that 85 to 90 all the way out, even with our 20 degrees. Because the second we get up there, we don't want to just hit right above the trees and then all of a sudden we went from a five knot to a 20 knot tailwind because we were at a 20 knot just at a thousand feet. Sure. Oh, just expect it to be bumpy and we'll just climb out at 100 knots exact same way we came in just at our best rate so we can get up there as quickly as possible get over those mountains all the way up to 12,000. The higher we are above those mountains the less turbulence we'll have. Great. We're ready. Great. Parking brakes off. All right, there's your performance. And rotate, ground effect. Not too much. Push over a bit so we can get our speed up because we're still 75. We're going to be getting into wind right here in a second. All right, nicely done. We got eight knots. As we get going, it's going to go up to 20 in the next 500 feet. Yep. So just be aware of yep. that. All right, winds are already up to 20 knots now at 1,000 feet exactly, just about. Or is V6622, November Tango Echo, departure. November Tango Echo, departed. Minyamia time, 1-5. Tracking up to 1-5 miles left of track 3-4-7. Do weather on climb one two thousand. Estimating a beam Ayura three eight. Number ten, go ahead, move the coffee departure on climb one two thousand. Confirm estimating Ayura time zero zero three eight. Two question. Confirm Ayura time two three three eight. Affirmative. A beam Ayura two three three eight. November ten, go I was like, no way. That's not a power cut. November ten, go all right, so I put in a Euro as well, because that's what I, my reporting point was. So let me zoom out so we can okay. kind of get an idea of where we are according to where it is. We'll just be a beam in, so we don't necessarily have to fly to it. We'll just basically fly direct to Medang, but then we could just report a beam a Euro. That's right. All right, we'll go ahead and pick up when we get a little bit closer down to Medang. We'll talk about our arrivals into Medang and then shoot the approach as well. It sounds like we probably might not need it, but It'll be a good opportunity to do it anyways. November Tango Echo. Vertical track. Orsby, November Tango Echo was a beam of Euro time 4-8. Leaving 1-2000 on descent, estimating Medang 0-9er. 
565, no, November Tango Echo. About 20 minutes out of Medang. We're shooting the approach. It looks like it's cleared up really nicely. We just listened to ATIS, Eric QH, 1014. Added at, uh, what is it, 18,000 or 1800? 1800, 1800, yep. 1800 and around 5,000, I think, with 10 kilometers visibility. So definitely don't need to shoot the approach. But for the sake of this flight, that's what we're going to do. So oh, we've got two different things. We've got an approach, I'm uh, sorry, we've got the arrival. We're coming in here on the Wilhelm arrival and we're coming in from this direction. That's so basically at four zero miles to run Medang, we need to be no lower than 9,800 feet. So he's already got that plugged in at 9,800 feet and our autopilot's already set up to level off at 9,800 feet so we don't pass through that. So if we want to sh set up the approach, we already did it. I'm just going to redo it for you guys. We're going to select the approach into Medang. We want 07 via Whiskey Delta. Whiskey Delta. We're going to hit enter, put our minimum barrows, and we're going to go up to 640 because we'll have the area Q&H of 1014. We've now started our descent, or once we get into their, basically, airspace, technically is when you'd be putting over to 1014. But we are on descent anyways, so that's usually when I do it. And we're gonna go ahead and load up this. Go put 1014 in there. You can see we're just about a beam Pinoir right now. So what we can do is just go ahead, go ahead and we can just um, hit direct to. On here, we could load the approach right now, but we'll just hit direct to this. And that way, we've got all of our little boxes right here. We can go straight over to Whiskey Delta. So what I like to do is we want to be at 5,600 feet by our Whiskey Delta. So I would turn my altitude select just quickly down to 5,600 and see if I'm going to get there. We're not. So we either need to slow down or, or increase our descent. our descent. Which I think we can just, we'll see what that does. We might have to slow down, potentially. Otherwise, we might find ourselves having to go down at 1,000 feet per minute, which is not really what we want to do with passengers. We don't have to. At two five miles, we go to 5,300, but at that point, we only need to go to 5,600 feet. For, um, okay. So see this? It has top of descent for our 5,600, but it's saying we're going to have to have 1,000 feet per minute okay. by the time we get there. So let's go ahead and rather than just cranking this up and up and up, let's go ahead and just start slowing down a little bit. It's like these sunglasses. I have them on my website in silver and gold as well as just like the regular classic aviators as well. These ones have glass lenses, so they last. I've had them for over a year and they don't have any scratches on them, so. It looks beautiful all the way down to Medang, but this is still a good scenario to do it, even visual, because it'll just free up your brain a little bit more for doing this. We're heading down to Whiskey Delta initially. We'll be at 5,600 feet. Medang Tower, November Tango Echo. November Tango Echo, Medang Tower, go ahead. Er, uh, November Tango Echo is two, three miles to the south, uh, 7,400 on descent. Uh, we'd, we'd like to request the RNAV um, GPS-7 for practice at the Whiskey, Whiskey Delta, and we have Charlie. No, but thank you. Echo Roger, report again, uh, passing Whiskey Delta. Report Whiskey, Whiskey Delta, November Tango Echo. All right, let's go ahead and uh, activate the approach. Right, so we can do... Enter. All right, and now approach. approach. We're going to zoom in. I typically like to have my little NSIT map into like 10 nautical miles so I can see a little bit more, but this is giving me a bigger situational awareness picture of where I am on the whole thing. If we can make this match up really close to that, we don't have to make power adjustments, changes, things like that. So we're not going like this. Okay. And then we have to keep making all these adjustments. Just getting our, our cyan. The least amount of work we have to do on an approach, the better. So we're going to be shooting this approach. Typically, we'd shoot them at 110 knots with a prop forward and 10 degrees of flaps. Okay. With about 800 foot-pound of torque, 
on average to give you that 110 in, in straight and level and on descent right around 400 foot pound of torque and that's going to give us 110 so if you know these numbers you don't have to think and you're not fishing for numbers you're not fishing for your airspeed just pull to those settings and then make your 50 pound foot adjustment to make any small adjustments so because this really isn't an approach we'll just basically fly from whiskey delta um, on to Whiskey India, we've got six nautical miles. So at about three nautical miles before Whiskey India, we're gonna push the prop forward, or we're actually gonna pull the power back to 800, okay. then push the prop forward very slowly, okay. so these people out here don't hear it, then and then throw our 10 degrees of flaps in. Three nautical miles before your spot, you can get everything done, it slows down, right about the time you're easing into 110, you're gonna be turning at Whiskey India. Okay. Vertical track. So now I should probably say, there you go. So it's requiring only about 200 to get to there. I'm hoping that this will actually give us air. So you can see our vertical guidance right here okay. is now popped up on the side of the screen. Okay, we've got four nautical miles. Start pulling your power back to 800 foot-pounds of torque. Just because we're in a descent, let's pull a little bit more. It's like 600, that will slow us. So very slowly on the prop, get that forward. If you do it in this order, by the time you get done with the power, the prop, then you're slow enough for your flaps. Thank you, November Daniel Echo is at Whis Whiskey India. November Daniel Echo, confirm uh, Whiskey India. Uh, uh, Whiskey India, November Daniel Echo. Roger, uh, report again, uh, passing Whiskey Foxtrot. Report Whiskey Foxtrot, November Daniel Echo. Okay, pull the power back to 400 foot pound of torque because we're now going down again. So 400 is giving you around 110 roughly. After our whiskey now our Zulu, will be our minimums then. whiskey Zulu is going to be our minimums after that. All right, so that's a 640. Now, if you're a tiny bit fast, just bump it back 500 foot pound of torque. Tower November Tango Echo, whiskey Foxtrot. November Tango Echo, Roger, caution, uh, red strike has it, runway 07, clear to land. Clear to land 07, November Tango Echo. That was a bit of a kind of like a rush. It's so much easier with the simulator, so you can kind of like pause it, sure, talk, talk about make it, make adjustments, talk. Uh, I think it's going to be helpful to do it the sim first, and then uh, when I'm, yeah, I got the rhythm of it, then I can. So this is the first one you've shot here in PNG. It is, yeah. Yep. So you still have like this glide slope thing as well that you can follow okay. along with as well. So let you know here. And obviously you have all your boxes. At this point, now we go, once we get up to Whiskey Zulu in 21 seconds, then we go on down. So we're still at 1100. Okay. Once we pass it, 15 seconds. All right, so there's our next one. Your missed approach point is 0.7 nautical miles from the end of the runway. Okay. And then be ready to get the power out 20 degrees of flaps in, because you're still only at 10, and then full flaps to be able to land where you actually want to. Okay. All right, so coming up on our missed approach point, and we can see the runway. Minimums. Minimums. We can pull right. power. You can go from here. We are cleared to land. Then we'll go full flaps. Up on center line here. Very nice. Welcome here to Medang. Cloudy day, kind of crummy. That's all right. Anyways, we're fueling up for just a little bit extra. We use a little bit extra fuel than we were kind of anticipating, but that's okay. We had lots and lots extra. And we just got one little item to head back up to Garoka. It's always busy on an IFR approach. I always forget that it's so much harder to actually say what you're thinking in words while you're doing it. Anyways, Jeff did a good job. I think I'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog right here just because, well, I don't have enough battery power to go all the way back up to Garoka, and there's really not that much exciting stuff going on on that flight. It looks like it's gonna be nice weather. So 
Thank you so much for taking the time, guys. I really do appreciate it. If you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing. Give it a thumbs up if you thought this was worthy of a thumbs up. And see you guys next time.